think I've mentioned this before, but you know, I've been in Japan now as long as I ever lived in Hawaii. In fact, actually, I've lived longer in Japan than I ever lived in Hawaii. Maybe I'm more Japanese than American. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, throughout the time that I've been here, I have heard the same number time and time again. Less than 1%. Less than 1% of the Japanese population is Christian. It's something that Pastor Fumi has talked about in the past that we want to change the number. But how can we do that? I remember the first few years I was in Japan, there was this big series of rallies called Jericho. And the way it was explained to me was that Christians would come to these rallies and we would pray and we would worship and the walls after seven years, the spiritual walls would come down. で、その集会の人っていう趣旨っていうのはこの全国のクリスチャンのこう人ところに集まってこう集まって礼拝を捧げて祈りを捧げましょう。そうしたら7年後にはこの日本での礼儀日本を追っている霊的な壁が崩れ
sharing the gospel with those around us. You see, Fumi, Hide, myself, and the other leaders don't have access to the same people that you do. つまりそのフミ先生やヒデさんやブルーさんという説教者がいますけれどもその人たちはあなたと同じ人にアクセスすることはできないんですね。You may be the only Christian your friends, your family, your co-workers, your neighbors may ever meet. もしかしたらあなたはあなたの友達や家族や同僚が会うかもしれない唯一のクリスチャンかもしれないんです。How faithful are you in sharing the gospel with them? ではあなたはその福音をその人たちに届けることにどれくらい忠実でしょうか私は、私自身に、僕は、まずこの質問を自分にぶつけてみました。私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、でもあの数字が変わるためには、あの 1% 以下という数字が変わるためには、私たちは神様が私たちに託したメッセージ、その福音のメッセージに忠実でなければならないです。Why is that so、important? じゃあなぜこの福音のメッセージがそんなに重要なんでしょうか The Apostle Paul tells us in one of the most famous passages in the Bible, in Romans 1:16. あのシトパウルという人はですね、聖書で最も有名なあの箇所の一つであるローマ人への手紙、一章十六節で私たちにこういうふうに語っています。He said, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew and to the Gentile. 一章十六節、私は福音を恥とはしません。福音はユダヤ人をはじめギリシア人にも信じるすべての人に救いをもたらす神の力です。Why is the gospel so important? なぜ福音がそんなに大切なんでしょうか The reason it's so, impo- so important is because it is the power of God that brings salvation. 福音が重要なのはそれがそれこそが福音こそが救いをもたらす神様の力そのものだからです。Do you want to see the number change in Japan? 皆さんはどうでしょうかこの日本で 1% 以下ってずっと言われてるけど、その数字が変わるのを見たいですか It's not gonna come by holding nationwide Christian rallies. それはこの 1% という数字は大きなクリスタンの集会を何度か開催すれば変わることではないんです。It's not going to come only by praying, although praying is absolutely vital. お祈りは絶対に不可欠です。だけど、単に祈ることによってもたらされるものでもありません。It's not going to come by Trying to live a good Christian life and hoping other people notice. It's going to come when God's people start sharing the gospel with those around. この数字が変わるのは、神の民である私たちがその福音を周りの人たちに伝え始めるときに。Because it is his gospel and his gospel alone that has the power to change lives. Are you faithful in sharing it? あなたはそれを周りの人に伝えるそのことにおいて忠実であろうとしているでしょうか Paul was. パウロはそうでした。One time, Paul was visiting the Ephesian church and he was Fairly certain it was the last time he would ever see him. Paul was at the Episodic of the Church 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 of Oh, nice knowing you. Bye. I don't want to do it. Of course not. You're going to think very carefully about your final words today. And Paul's words to them are very striking. Let's take a look at Acts chapter 20, verses 20 to 21. He says, You know that I have not hesitated to preach anything that would be helpful to you, 
but have taught you publicly and from house to house. I've declared to both Jews and Greeks that they must turn to God in repentance and have faith in our Lord Jesus. Paul continues in verse 25. Now I know that none of you among whom I have gone about preaching the kingdom will ever see me again. Those words probably hit home when they first They were probably heartbroken that they would never see Paul again. But Paul's next words to them probably hit them even harder. Therefore, I declare to you today that I am innocent of the blood of any of you. For I have not hesitated to proclaim to you the whole will of God. What is Paul talking about? I am innocent of the blood of any of you. Paul is quoting from a prophet in the Old Testament named Ezekiel. Twice in Ezekiel's ministry, God gave him the exact same message. Ezekiel chapter 3, starting from verse 17. Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the people of Israel. So hear the word I speak and give them warning from me. When I say to a wicked person, you will surely die, and you do not warn them or speak out to dissuade them from their evil ways in order to save their life, that wicked person will die for their sin, and I will hold you accountable for their blood. But if you do warn the wicked person and they do not turn from their wickedness or from their evil ways, they will die for their sin, but you will have saved エゼキエル書3章17節から神様がエゼキエルに語っているところです。人の声を私はあなたをイスラエルの家に見張りとした。あなたは私の口から言葉を聞き、私に代わって彼らに警告を与えよ。私が悪いものにあなたは必ず死
I have also warned you about the consequences of sin and rejecting the offer of life that God wants to give to you. 私はこのことについても話しました。あなたの罪や、そして神様があなたに与えた命の申し出を拒否すること、その結果について、結果どうなるかということについても、私はあなたたちにちゃんと警告しました。私はあなたたちにちゃんと警告しました。私はあなたたちにちゃんと警告しました。あなたにも警告し、神様に心を伝えたので、もしあなたがその、神様を受け入れない場合、私はもはやあなたに責任は負いません。The responsibility is now yours. 責任はあなたのものです。わ、わ、あれのばあちゅう、だって、かなはだまゆう。これ、皆さんはどう感じるたかなあの、すごく重いなって僕は思いました。It hurts. うん、重いところがすごく耳に痛いなって思いました。Because I think of all the people that I have not fulfilled my responsibility to. And if nothing changes, they are going to hell. And God will hold me responsible because I have not told them. そして神様はその責任は私にあるんだというふうに言われています。As Christians, we have a responsibility to share the gospel with those around us. And it is not enough just to give them a part of the gospel, the part that is easy to hear. We need to give them the whole. 私たちは人に伝えるときにこう福音の全体を、全体像を渡す必要があります。And if you look at the example of the apostles in the book of Acts, that's exactly what they did. 人たちをどういうふうにしていたんでしょうか ?One time Peter was talking with some people about Jesus and all Jesus had done while he was on earth. あるときは、首都ペテロがですね、このイエス様のことについて、イエス様がされたことについて、周りの人と話していました。He told them about how Jesus had preached good news of peace, how Jesus had healed many people and had Helped many people who Satan was oppressing. And then Peter said this in Acts chapter 10, starting from verse 39. He said, We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a cross. But God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. ヒトビトはこのイエスを木にかけて殺しましたが、神はこの方を三日目に蘇らせ、現れさせてくださいました。神全体にではなく、神によって前もって選ばれた証人である私たちに現れたのです。私たちはイエスが死者の中から蘇られた後、一緒に食べたり飲んだりしました。No, that sounds like a standard gospel message, right? うん、あのこれでまあよく聞くあの福音のメッセージですよね。Jesus died on the cross for our sins and rose again. イエス様が私たちの罪のために十字架にかかって、But then Peter concluded with these words, and without looking at your Bible, I want you to guess how he finishes this sentence. Peter says, He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that He is the one whom God appointed as. What? Talk to each other. What do you <laughs> <laughs> no. 
Ten more seconds. All right, are you ready? Hi, Tajuki, are you so cup? Here it is. He commanded us to preach. <laughs> <laughs> He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. So stay is what you will like to be one of the Sina Monono, Sabakinusi, Sabakinus to stay coming as a lameta Pada de Arcoto, Stobito in the best tire, a Cassis Rioni, or Tastini, is very much. There was Sabakinus. It is, of course, important to tell people about Jesus. To tell them that Jesus loves us and he died on a cross for us. But there's another vital part of the gospel that must be said. The day is coming when he will judge all people. We will all stand before Jesus one day and we will have to answer to him for everything we've done. I don't know about you, but to me that sounds a little bit scary. But there is good news. What is it? Peter tells us in verse 43. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. That is the whole gospel. And know what Peter said in verse 42. Jesus commanded that we preach the whole gospel. Not just that God loves you. Not just that Jesus died on the cross and, and rose again. But also that He will judge us all. And the only hope we have is to put our faith in him and on the work he did on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. You see, people will never see their need for Jesus unless they are confronted with what the gospel is trying to accomplish. The gospel is not trying to give us a happy life with no problems. The gospel is not trying to just upgrade our lives like Apple upgrades its iPhones every year. The gospel is dealing with a very serious problem in our lives. We have sinned and we stand under God's judgment for that sin. And the most damning sin is that we have turned our backs on God and we have said, I don't need you. I'm just going to live my own 
And by doing that comes all the other sins that we do in our lives. We say and do things that hurt other people and even ourselves. And we deserve judgment from that. We often read John 3.16 and we love how it talks about the love of God and how he sent his son for us. Some of us even go further and read John 3.17 where it says this. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. People love to hear this. Jesus didn't come to condemn me. He came to save me. But has it ever occurred to you why Jesus didn't come to condemn the world? I mean, there's so many evil people in this world. Why didn't he come to condemn them? You know the reason? You find it in verse 18. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. Jesus didn't need to come to this world to condemn it. We were already condemned before he came. The whole reason he came was because we were all under God's judgment and were condemned. But because he has now come and taken the punishment for our sin, we no longer have to be condemned. We can be forgiven. And that's the good news we're telling people. It's also the problem with my way of thinking before. Again, I used to think that people don't come to Jesus because they're already satisfied with their lives. If our gospel message is God came to give you a happy and satisfying life, then of course, if people are already happy and satisfied with their lives, they won't see their need for Jesus. But Jesus didn't come simply to give us a happy and satisfied life. He came to rescue us from the judgment of God. And that's something that everyone needs to come to understand whether their lives are going well or not. One time, four men had a friend who was paralyzed. And they thought, if we just bring him to Jesus, Jesus will heal him. But do you know what Jesus' first response was? It wasn't to heal the man's paralysis. Instead, he said to the man, your sins are forgiven. 
イエス様はそうではなくてそのところに言いましたあなたの罪はもう許されたよ That was the man's greatest need. それがその男の一番必要なことだったからです。Whether his friends realized it or not, whether the man himself realized it or not, Jesus realized it. And so he dealt with that problem first. それが一番必要なことなんだっていうのは彼自身、その彼の友達たちが分かってたどうかは分からない。でも、イエス様にはそれが分かってました。だから、最初にその問題を取り扱ったんです。Another time, Jesus healed another man who was paralyzed. And after he healed him, he said this. He said, See, you are well again. Stop sinning, or something worse may happen to you. そうでないと、もっと悪いことがあなたに起こるかもしれない。What was he saying? イエス様は何を言おうとしているんですか He was saying, You probably thought that the biggest problem in your life was your paralysis. イエス様は彼にこう言いたかったんです。あなたはおそらくあなたの人生の最大の問題は足が動かないことだって思ってるかもしれない。I healed you, but I want you to understand something. 私はあなたの足を癒したけど、でも理解してほしいことがあります。Your biggest problem is your sin. And unless your sin problem is dealt with, something worse will happen to you. You will face God's judgment. When you look at the people around you, do you see that their real problem is a sin problem? 周りの人を見て、こうその人たちの本当の問題が罪であるというふうに皆さんは考えるでしょうか。Their real problem is not their health. 彼らの本当の問題は病気のことじゃないんです。It's not their finance. 彼らのお金のことでもないんです。It's not their family issue. 彼らのややこしい家族のことでもないんです。It's a sin problem. 本当の問題は罪の問題なんです。And so, when we're reaching out to people who are hurting, of course, it's important to do everything we can to help them with their issues. But it is not enough. We need to help them see their sin. 私たちはその人たちがその人の罪の問題と向き合うことができるように助ける必要があるんです。And if you look at the people around us and they seem happy with their lives apart from God, what we have to help them see is that there is a serious problem in their life that they have not yet dealt with. 一方で、あなたの周りの誰かが神様から離れて自分は、でもそれでも,もう自分は別にハッピーだしっていうふうに満足しているようなら、その人たちには、まだ対処してない深刻な問題があるんだよっていうことを彼らが知ることができるように私たちは手助けするべきなんです。なあ、am I saying like we should be like some of those people driving around in Osaka saying you're going to hell? じゃあ私たちこうなんかヨドバシカメラの近くにいらしいんですけどなんかこうあなた方は地獄に行くのですでこのなんかトラックでこうわーってこう叫んでる人たちのように私たちもトラックに乗り込むべきなんでしょうか。But we are not trying to scare the hell out of people. But like Jesus and the apostles, we need to help people see their greatest problem. 本当の問題は何なのかっていうのを気づくことを助ける必要があります。They need reconciliation with God. 人は神様と和解することが必要なんです。And until they see that, they will never see their need for Jesus. そのことに気づかないのであれば、人がイエス様を求めるってことは永遠にないでしょう。The Apostle Paul wrote this about the non-Christians in our lives. It says this in Romans chapter 10, starting from verse 14. How then can they call on one they have not believed in? 
And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? How can your friends and family call on the one they haven't believed in? How can they believe in the one of whom they have not yet heard? And how can they hear unless you tell them? Because, like I said before, for some of them, you are the only Christian they will ever meet. And if not you, then who? Some of you might say, but Bruce, I, I really don't know what to say. Let me give a suggestion. Take a look at Acts chapter 17 when you go. In that passage, Paul is talking to a people that have absolutely no knowledge of Christianity. And use his message as a starting point. Our response. Number one, there is a God. And he's not like the gods that people in Japan worship. He's not an idol made of metal or wood or stone. We don't pray to or serve something that we created with our own hands. Rather, we pray to and serve the one who created us. Second, because God created us, he is our rightful Lord. We belong to Him. That's something that people don't often think about. If there is a God, if He created us, then we rightfully belong to Him. And more importantly, we are accountable to him. The third point is that God is personal. He's not like some kind of force or power like you see in Star Wars. And he's not just someone who's way out there who has no connection. You're not just an insignificant speck of dust. Rather, he loves you. He wants a personal relationship with you. The whole reason our life has any meaning at all is because God looks at us as that. We are not just some cosmic act. He specially created us in love to have a relationship with 
神様は私たちと愛の関係を築くために特別に私たちのことを作られたんです。But there is a problem. でも問題があります。It's sin. 私たちは罪を犯します。And that's a loaded word that really needs to be explained, especially in Japan. Sin is not just committing crimes. It's turning our backs on God and living our own lives. If God is our rightful Lord, And we are turning our backs on Him and living our own way. What is that called? It's called rebellion. And so the answer to sin in our lives is not doing a bunch of good things to try to make up for the bad things that we do. It's to turn our hearts back to God and offer our lives to Him. And that's what we mean by repentance. But it wasn't enough that we repent. A penalty had to be paid for our kind of rebirth. And the only person that could pay that penalty was Jesus. He took our place and he died on the cross like the rebels we were, and he paid the penalty for our rebellion. イエス様は私たちの身代わりになってまるでイエス様が反逆者であるかのように十字架にかけられましたイエス様が私たちのその罰を支払ってくれたのでそんなことができるなんて言葉が出ないそれが私たちは逆らったのにもうあなたは知らないっていう態度だったのにその方はいまだに私たちのことをとても愛していて私たちが受けるべき罰を代わりに引き受けてくれたんですそして神様はイエス様を死から蘇らせました。Now Jesus is our judge and one day we will all stand before him. そしてイエス様は今私たちの裁き主であり、いつの日か私たち全員がイエス様の見舞いに立つ日が来ます。The only question left is this. 唯一の質問はこれです。Will we stand before him as forgiven, beloved children of God? じゃあその日私たちは許されて、そして愛されている神の子供として神様の見舞いに立つんでしょうか Or, as, or will we stand before him as unrepentant rebels standing in judgment? That's a question we all need to ask ourselves. And that's the choice that the people you love need to face too. もう直面しなければならない選択です。That's the whole gospel. それが、これが福音の全体像です。That's the gospel we must preach. これが私たちが伝えなければならない福音です。To our family, to our friends, to those we love. 私たちの家族に、私たちのお友達に、私たちの愛する人に。Now, am I saying that you have to tie them in a chair and force feed them the gospel whether they want it or not? じゃあどうしましょうかこう私たちお友達家族を連れてきてこう椅子に座らせて縛りつけてずっと誘惑でバーって振り続けてればいいんでしょうかもちろん違います。Nor do you necessarily have to tell them all these things at one time and in that specific order. またこれらのこととすべて一回でまたしかもこの特定の決まった順番で話さないといけないってこともないんです。But as time goes on and the relationship with them grows, they should learn what they do. でも、時間をかけて、その人とのあなたとその人の関係が成長していくにしたがって、その人があなたが信じていることっていうのをだんだん知っていきますよね。Because again, if you don't tell them the whole thing, then who will? もう一度言いますね。もし、あなたが彼らに神様の福音を伝えないのであれば、じゃあ誰が来るの ?So for that we need boldness. 
And maybe that starts just with a simple step of telling them you're a Christian. Do the people around you know that? Do they know how important your relationship with Jesus is to you? In your conversations with them, can they see how your belief in Jesus, how your relationship with Jesus affects your decisions, your priorities, your values? あなたの価値観、あなたの優先順位、あなたの態度、あなたの人生っていうのはその神様の福音が形作ってるんだっていうことをその人たちは知ることができるでしょうか。Now of course it's important to live out your faith in front of others.うん、もちろんあのあなたがこう人の前でこう自分はクリスチャンですっていうその信仰を持って生きることは大切なことです。But that isn't enough.でもそれだけでは十分ではないんです。You need to tell them about your faith. あなたは周りの人にあなたの信仰について話す必要があります。Share with them why you chose to follow after Jesus.ぜひあなたがイエス様に従うことを選んだ理由がありますよね。それをぜひ分かち合ってください。Share with them all the things that God has done for you.イエス様があなたの人生であなたにしてくれたことを話してください。Invite them to church. その人たちをどうか教会に招いてください。If they're struggling with problems in their lives, ask God for wisdom on how to touch them. あの、その人たちがもし何かこう何かに苦しんでいるならあなたがどのようにそのことに関わることができるかについての知恵を神様に求めてください。And let me close with that passage from Romans one more time, and let's read it together. Let's read it in English first. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. 14節から聖の、しかし信じたことのない方をどのようにして呼び求めるのでしょうか。聞いたことのない方をどのようにして信じるのでしょうか。述べ伝える人がいなければどのようにして聞くのでしょうか。使わされることがなければどのようにして述べ
Help us to see their need for you. あなたを求める心をどうか本当にあなたが与えてください。Help the people we love see their need for you. あなたが愛する人たちを私たちが助けることができますように。Holy Spirit, fill each and every one of us here. Let your hand be on us. And help us to make an impact in this world. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.